Being romantic is not the same as just being single, being unlovable, incapable of love, not finding the right person yet, or having some kind of issue. Be considerate of the way you talk about romance. When you frame it as being this ultimate life goal or something fundamental to human connection, then that can be very alienating for aromantic people. So I saw this video this morning that Ariel Scarcella posted on Twitter and I, I okay, can I, can I be honest with you guys? Like my general mood on all things woke right now is essentially that like every day is a goddamn shit show. Every single day, every single day is another reminder that these people they're, they're pod people. The woke are pod people. I use the invasion of the body snatchers analogy like all the time because it is just the most apropos analogy I can make. These people have very literally lost their humanity and now they're trying to strip everyone around them of their humanity so that they can feel validated in their lack of humanity. That's exactly what this is. So Ariel was talking about this new phenomenon called aromantic. Okay. I've, I've heard of asexual before. I have, I have feelings about that, but the idea of aromantic is something that was new to me. And I, I'm, I'm surmising that it's this idea that people are just born not wanting romance which is entirely not true. That is completely not true. They're, they're, you're talking, like, they're trying to assert that the entire emotion function of their brain does not exist. That is completely untrue for the average person. I'm sorry. No. This, I'm, I'm gonna say it, and I don't care what YouTube thinks. This is not a real thing. It's not real. This is something that they're using to make themselves feel special, to put themselves in a category because they can't deal with their own emotions where they're uncomfortable receiving love. For some reason, that's what it is. It's being uncomfortable receiving love. Lots of people are uncomfortable receiving love and that's something that you can work on. I just don't, guys, I just don't know. I, I just... I, uh, <laughs> is how I feel about this. All right, let's read this article. Let's, let's find out what it means to be a romantic. There is a phase in our lives when everyone seems asexual and almost everyone seems aromantic. It wasn't until puberty kicked in that platonic relationships seemed to take a back seat. My peers stopped wanting to play together and started wanting to date each other. God forbid they want to go on a date. That was when I started to realize that there was something different about me. I didn't seem to be experiencing the same urges as those around me. I chose to go to an all-girls school in hopes that, in the absence of boys, everyone would stop caring about sex and dating. It actually had the opposite effect. There was a sense of deprivation in the air and the heightened sense of desire to project sexuality on to everyone and to everything. You know, I saw this article and then in the uh, New York Post this morning about how parents in about how this school is essentially trying to uh, keep people from using words like mom and dad because they're all types of different types of families and you don't want to offend people if they don't have a mom and a dad. And it made me think back to like, you know, I've talked about this on my channel. I don't have great relationships with my parents. And I rec remember, you know, maybe five, four or five years ago when there, there was this movement, at least on Facebook among my friends to stop celebrating Mother's Day and Father's Day because you might offend people that don't have a mother or a father. And I was like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, I don't have great relationships with my parents, but it doesn't bother me for someone else to to celebrate that. And the same with this. It's like, if, if you want to live a life of asexuality, if you feel like you were born, like, fine, fine, fine. You don't have to have sex. That is a choice that you can make. If you don't want romance in your life, that is a choice that you can make. But do not deprive everyone else of a, hu of a human experience simply because you are not electing 
to participate. Why do you need the validation from other people if this is really how you were born? Learn to love yourself just the way you are and screw what anyone else says or does. No one is forcing you to have sex. No one is forcing you to be in a romantic relationship. But that doesn't mean that those of us who like doing one and or both of those things should be denied that opportunity just because it makes you uncomfortable. As a result, you can already tell this is going to be quite a week. I'm already like ranting on a Monday. It's because it's an Aries moon. This is what Joshua is going to tell me in 25 minutes when I have a meeting with him. It's an Aries moon. Therefore, I will rant. As a result, my lack of interest became even more obvious and it became a not so fun game to work out the source of what should be troubling me, but hadn't been until that point. Having a sexual orientation isn't just natural, it's essential, it's part of being a fully functional human being, and to romantically love and to be loved by another person is the ultimate goal. It's part of being normal, which made me both abnormal and puzzling. When you're asexual, people think there's something wrong with you. When you're aromantic, they think there's something wrong with your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 No, it, it's not even that. It's like, I don't think something is wrong with their soul. I think the problem is, for some reason, probably because of something that happened in their childhood, they have a problem receiving love. Now, this might seem a little weird, but it is actually much harder for a for like the average person to receive love than it is to receive criticism. OK, M most people will receive your criticism like we are. We are very good at internalizing every negative possible thing about ourselves at any given moment. But when you ask people to receive love, that can be extremely uncomfortable for a lot of people. And that I'm going to bet you is where this whole idea is coming from. It's because something has happened that's made it really difficult for her to receive love. And rather than work on the thing inside of her that is uh, that that is causing that to, to work through that issue, to release that fear, that anger, that that whatever it is, whatever it is, she's instead chosen to create a new goddamn sexuality. And this is the problem. This is the problem when we do not teach people how to how to look at themselves and say, what am I doing to cause this discomfort? What can I change about myself? What do I need to work on about what, what self-development work do I need to do? That has just flown completely out the window because every time we have a problem, we can just invent a new gender or invent a new sexuality. And there you go. Even for teenage girls who internalized all of the Disney cha mes channels messages to be yourself. It's never nice to have people publicly deb debate your supposed physical and psychological flaws. Then don't write about it in Vogue. Like, you're writing about it in Vogue. There's going to be a discussion. My nickname in school was hollow and emotion. <laughs> That's not a nickname. I was a joker with a decent amount of friends, but I was lacking something crucial, the kind of love that really mattered and the kind of lust that made life exciting. I was practically Lord Voldemort with braids. I sat there through regular DIY sexuality tests, having my peers show me graphic sexual imagery, have very sexual conversations in my presence, and ask me inappropriately intimate questions to gauge how far gone I truly was. These tests led to the development of theories most centered around my having some kind of mental problem. After a while, you start to wonder if everyone knows something you don't know, dude. No, 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 no. It's not about having a problem. It's not about having a mental defect. Every single human being in the world has baggage. Every single one of us. If uh, Spoiler, if you have emotional baggage, you are not a special and unique snowflake. Every single person has that emotional baggage. How you deal with that baggage? Do you blame it on other people or do you use it as something to, to uh, put yourself into some sort of development program to change, to grow, to expand beyond it, to release whatever pain you have. That is your choice. But just because you have emotional baggage doesn't mean you have a mental problem. And, the, and, and when you frame it like this, you're only putting obstacles in your own way 
to from from reaching another height of personal development. You can work through all of these issues. Most people have to at some point in their lives. But the minute that you say, well, you're just saying I have an emotional problem. What you're doing is you're digging your heels and you're saying, this is just who I am. I don't have to change anything. Well, you don't have to change anything, but you are the only person that suffers. You're the only person that suffers by refusing to do the work, as it were, to, to move past whatever caused you to not be able to receive love in the first place. All right, we're going to skip this next paragraph because there's stuff in it I can't say on YouTube. Um, but I will link the article in the description below and you can go and read it for yourself. But let's see. Uh, I was referred to as stupid. I started to believe that was the case. It would impact my experience in education for the next eight years, long after I realized there was a word for what I was. Asexual. I had heard the word during one of my near-daily sexuality tests that I was subjected to. I was asked if I was gay, to which I said I wasn't interested in anybody like that, man or woman. At 15, I was asked, maybe you're asexual or something, but it wasn't quite the light bulb moment. How could it be when I had never heard the word outside of biology class? After an evening of Googling, I realized that there were many people with my exact experience, complete strangers whose stories sounded so strangely similar to mine. I also stumbled across the word aromantic at that time. I didn't understand the need for it. Wouldn't all asexual people be aromantic? Aromantic relationship without sex is just friendship with rules, I thought. Most asexual people don't dress like this on the internet. I'm just saying, people's actions will always tell you what they're really doing. Don't listen to their words. You look at their actions. They will always tell you, don't tell me you're asexual when you're dressing in lingerie on the internet. I'm sorry. I don't believe you. I don't. Sorry. It's definitely an Aries moon on a Monday. I'll tell you what. Either way, my discovery showed me that I wasn't alone, but that only half but that was only half helpful i now had an identity that no one heard of or understood most didn't believe that being asexual or aromantic was a real thing and i doubted it too a natural consequence of years of armchair pathologicalization if asexuality was real why didn't no one tell you that being sexually attracted to nobody was an option what if it was just an in internet identity made up to comfort people with all the issues that had been attributed to me? The ironclad, wo the ironclad law of woke projection in action right here, right in this sentence. What if it was just an internet identity made up to comfort people with all the issues that had been attributed to me? What if it was just made up on the internet indeed? I didn't have to go down the rabbit hole to realize that asexuality, like many other heteronormative identities, had been medicalized. What I had experienced was just the tip of the iceberg as someone who hadn't been prescribed drugs I didn't need or subjected to unnecessary hormone tests. I was one of the lucky ones. My activism would be my gateway to the community despite being the ugly friend at school. I ended up being a model while at university. I decided to use the platform I had gained through my career to raise awareness for asexuality and a romanticism. And listen, like I actually don't have as much of an issue with the asexuality bit as I do with the aromantic bit. I'm sorry. Like the, a the asexual thing I think is a real thing. I think, you know, I don't want to get into it here. I think that's actually a real thing. I do not for one second believe that aromanticism is a real thing. I'm sorry. I don't believe it in any stretch of the imagination. It gave me the opportunity to encounter a range of asexual and aromantic people offline. And then it was then that I had learned the significance of having an aromantic identity. There are many asexual people who still feel romantic attraction as well as aromantic people who still feel sexual attraction. They have their own range of experiences, their own culture, their own flag, their own flag. It can't be an identity if you don't have a flipping flag. And like the asexual community, I was relieved to see that they are just normal people. These intersecting communities are not stereotypes. They aren't just 13-year-old pink-haired kids making up Tumblr identities to feel special. They were par they were parents. Wrap your head around that. They were parents. They were par I'm going to I'm going to let you know on a secret. To become a parent 
you probably have to do something. <laughs> they were parents, lawyers, academics, husbands, girlfriends, artists, black, white, young, old, and differing feelings towards the many complex elements of sexuality and intimacy. Most importantly, they were happy. More Instagram. I was proud to be part of both communities, and I know that as someone who is asexual and aromantic, I'm a complete person and can live a perfectly fulfilling life. Well, yeah, I mean, you can probably live a perfectly fine life, but dude, I'm sorry. Like, if you are not allowing yourself to receive love, your life is not going to be as fulfilling as it could be. And I say this again as someone who, like, I struggle with this all the time. Joshua yells at me about this like all the flipping time. All the he doesn't yell. Joshua doesn't yell, but like he 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 pushes me to be better at receiving love all of the time. It is a struggle, especially with when you have issues that you are working through. I totally get it. But I also know that you know, calling myself an aromantic is not going to actually solve the problem and it's not going to lead me to having the most fulfilling life that I possibly could. Over the years, I've become more open about my identities and I've often been met with a sympathetic reaction. You must feel like you're missing out. I can't imagine being like that. It must be hard for your family. Do, do you worry no one will want you? How do you handle being so lonely? You're so brave and strong. What will you do with your life now? Even in 2021, a woman who isn't romantically loved or sexually desired by their special someone is perceived as being afflicted with some kind of life-limiting condition. Asexuality doesn't make you undesirable or unable to desire others. It is a unique experience of sexuality, not a deprivation from it. Even if it was, there is so much more to life than what turns us on and what we do about it. Romantic love is just one form of love, neither superior nor inferior to any other. Being aromantic doesn't mean that you can't be, that you can't love or be loved. It doesn't mean you are void of emotions or capabilities. I'm still waiting for her to get to the definition. We're like, what, seven paragraphs into this article? I'm still waiting for her to get to the definition of what it actually means to be aromantic. And when you have this hard of a time defining something, there is a reason for it. I feel confident. Wait, hang on. I am not lonely with my friends, family, coworkers, and supporters. I feel confident when I meet my goals and form worthwhile connections and others rather with others rather than someone wants to date me. My success isn't determined by whether someone will want to marry me. You're dude. You do not need to create your own sexuality in order for your success in life to not be determined by if someone wants to marry you. That's true regardless. There are very successful people that have had very successful careers that have never gotten married. Oprah is not married. No matter what you think of her, she's not married, dude. You can be successful and not be married. Doesn't mean you create a whole sexuality. What we want out of life is our decision alone. Our sources of happiness should not be defined by our ever-changing culturally relative social standards. The love of a romantic partner won't complete me because I was born complete. Everyone is born complete. Everyone. Why? Like, okay, so she's basically written this whole article to validate her lack of ability to receive love. And at the same time, insinuating that anyone that can receive love just wasn't born complete and they need someone else to complete them. I'm sorry, what? That makes absolutely no sense. Feeling sexual attraction to others won't liberate me because my liberation is not dependent on other people. Valentine's Day is an occasion that amps up the focus on and the pressure to achieve a very specific type of love and sexual expression, one that is actually alienating people from, for people inside and outside the asexual community. During a pandemic, when many relationships have been strained, tested, formed, or distanced, it's important to keep the diversity of romantic and sexual feelings in mind. Yes. During a pandemic, this is what we should be worried about. People who don't want to date. 
Many expect me to feel annoyed or lonely during this time of year, but I actually feel empowered and excited by the way sex, romance, and love are discussed more deeply around this time. These conversations are constantly expanding to become more inclusive for everyone. And that's what we need to see all year round. So we had an entire article about validating that aromanticism is a sexual identity. And she didn't even define it. Didn't even define it. Didn't even define it. Dude, here's the thing. I I actually do agree with a portion of her article, but not for the reason that you might think. I agree with a portion of it in that I do not believe that we need other people to define us. I also don't believe that we need to mold our life around what other people perceive as socially acceptable. These things are completely true. And yet, and yet, they can be true without creating another sexual identity that has that has no basis in sense whatsoever. Dude, if you don't want to date, don't date. If you don't want to have sex, don't have sex. If you don't want someone to take you out to a candlelit dinner, then don't go out to dinner. I don't know why these people need everyone else in to validate their identity when at the same time they're saying, I don't need anyone to validate my identity. Then why are you claiming that you do? then why are you trying to generate awareness for something that just live your life, dude, live your life, be happy, do what you want to do. Don't do what you don't want to do. It's really not that hard. These people are going to drive me insane. I, I genuinely feel like I'm watching everyone around me slowly descend into madness from all of this. And I, I mean, people from both political sides, I feel like both political sides are just slowly descending into madness Ah, oh, dude, dude, dude. That's all I got for right now. I'll see you soon.